Uh, welcome to another episode of not necessarily Bussin' with the Boys, but the Bussin's, our first Bussin' Spring Football Tour. We have on Eric Chenander, Coach Chins. He's the D coordinator for uh, the Huskers. And Black shirts. obviously your very own Scott Frost. Let's give a hand for the coaches coming the on the coaches, show. Boys. You guys too. A little, a little juice. Little juice. <laughs> um, Scott barely lifts his hand. Good couple, job. That was that was solid too. Couple Chevys, couple Chevy guys. Yeah. Lunch pail, hard workers, mm -hmm. dependable, just like the Chevy Silverado. Our presenting sponsor of this show. Um, do you you want to flare up the tailgate a little bit? The uh, the multi flex tailgate with six configurations. Well, I think you just did it, but the multi flex uh, tailgate six configurations. <laughs> did I say that right? No, Again? You did phenomenal. It's bro. an outstanding thing. You guys probably have in your Chevy Silverados. You guys are some gentlemen, some blue collar gentlemen, but gentlemen that like the nice things. And this multi-flex six configuration tailgate murder gives you everything you want, right? Yes. It's it's got the same thing. You, you, you use your fob, press the thing, tailgate goes down. You might be thinking to yourself, Taylor, why are you telling me this bullshit right now? <laughs> Every truck does that. But you know what they don't do? Have a heavy day lifting. You put the stuff back in there, hit the fob again, comes up. All right. What's it like coming Who's up? Blew your mind right there. I didn't even know that. Yeah, you didn't know that. Didn't know you want to go hey. buy another Chevy now, don't you? I might. Yeah. Hey, wait, wait. Can we get him a mic? <laughs> <laughs> I got, I got right the, now. I got the trail boss, so I don't have that. Dude. <laughs> you, don't have, you don't have the trail boss. I do have the trail boss. It doesn't have the tailgate like that. Well, I'll have to, we'll have to talk to Chevy so far yeah. about it. For we'll that. have to get you to sit, Dylan. I'll call Tim Peeper. We'll make, you know, he should be taking very good care of you. All right, all I right. busted my ass for that dude for years. I need, the I need the busting with the boys trailer hitch cover. We got you, we got you. But uh, appreciate you guys for coming on the show. It's big time. Actually, it really is big time. I appreciate this. This is nice coming to a place like this, like Nebraska. You don't know a lot about it. You've only seen it a couple times when you go to play. Got our ass beat here. Then you come in. Will takes me to some bullshit yeah, place called Indian ass. Village. And you really hope, like, I I hope you guys can tell me some places to go eat after this because I've been wanting to tell this for a while, but like, I want to wait for you guys. I sit there. I look at Will in the eyes. And I say, hey, take me somewhere that screams Nebraska Cornhuskers, somewhere that I can feel like I'm a native. I'm in this place. I'm with these blue-collar people living the dream. He says, say less. Drives me. We turn the corner. He goes, we're in an Indian village. It doesn't register. Village Inn. What the fuck? It, it, it keeps Don't Indian. disrespect Village Inn, bro. What did I say? Indian village? Yeah. That's a small little place up at Cave Creek. My bad. <laughs> we go to Village Inn. And he says Village Inn to me. And I think, oh, that sounds like a small little mom and pop shop. Sounds like a little deal. We turn the corner. I see the brown octagon or whatever their fucking symbol is that sits on the side of the corner. And I'm like... There's two dozen of these things in Arizona. <laughs> what am I doing here? I walk in. It's full of oxygen tanks and walkers, dude. I, it's only old people everywhere. <laughs> and Will's like, hey, huh? <laughs> Look at me like, hey, this is about to be a hitter. <laughs> Bro, I'm so mad. I'm like, this is the place? We sit down. The lady, the waitress, she's sweet as pie. The guys, the guys sitting behind us were assholes. Didn't like them one bit. The food was okay at best. And halfway through, Will goes, oh, I fucked up. I should have took you somewhere else. I'm like, no, no doubt. <laughs> he's he's here, not told, acknowledging we the, told the, the equipment the last guys. we had, dude. It was a good time. We told the equipment guys where we went, and they're killing Will. And obviously, you guys knew. You guys well, walked right up here and was giving Will hell for it. We'll, we'll get you set up with some good places. No question. We'll get you set up with that. some local spots, some yeah. good places to get you a little lunch, a little dinner. Where should we be going around here? Well, I mean, How do you not know that? Well, hang on, now. I'm you, putting it Will, in there. I'm putting it in there. Well, you know that. No free shout outs. We'll talk about it afterwards. Okay. I love, I say, that, I love that. I love that. Hey, did you see the postcards that they're making for recruits now? They got <laughs> busting the boys on there a little bit. Who knows how many they actually send out? Hey, if they send out one, we've made it, right? Yeah. I one think of the most historic programs in all of college football sending out a postcard with our bus on it, with you in short shorts, and Daisy Duke shorts, <laughs> and cowboy boots. <laughs> That's outstanding. What a recruiting pitch. I told them all we were going on here today, so they all wanted us to set the link. So we're going to send the link to all the recruits. Uh, you know, they want to see Coach Frost on Bussing with the Boys. So, Were you excited to come hit. back on a second time? I can't believe I got invited back, first of all. But I had a great time. You were here for one of the games. Got to come on the bus. What game was that, by the way? Which game was it? Was it Michigan? He knows. He was it Michigan? Michigan? Yeah. It was absolutely a dominant performance. What did you, what'd you think about the atmosphere, Taylor? Oh, uh, I... When I played, when I played here, though, at the game you were at, oh, you you didn't come, yeah, right? I was, no, I was, he was actually okay. playing in the NFL. Okay, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I will say about the atmosphere is it's insane. It's crazy to me because when you come to Nebraska, it's it, it, Nebraska is Nebraska, and you go into the stadium, and it's so loud, it's obnoxious, and everyone's screaming at you. But as soon as the game's over, all the fans are like, "Hey, great job!" It's like a nice little firm pat in the ass as they send you on your way. 
Yeah. It's a great deal. It really is. When I when we first got here, everybody was like, "Wait till you come out on game day," and I'm like, yeah. "I'm like, listen, I've been, you know, SEC stadiums, Pac-12, NFL stadiums. Don't worry about it." Yeah. We came out for the spring game, and I was like, "Oh my god." Yeah. I mean, these fans are the best in the country, hands down. It's it's crazy atmosphere and that night will you were there that michigan game was out of control dude it was man and it was such bullshit that they didn't blow the damn whistle when adrian was stood up that's a dead that's you know i won't put you guys on the spot but wouldn't you agree <laughs> <laughs> we just we just need to not fumble first of all <laughs> but no, it was i got so much respect for them and i was happy to see them in the playoff and you know that that was kind of the story of our year we were so against a playoff team we had every chance to win the game at the end of the game and but to your point, between the third and fourth quarter, uh, they started playing music and the lights shut off and oh, the man, red electric. started going around the stadium and we were ahead at the time. And uh, it maybe we even had one of the Michigan coaches tell us on the road it was the best environment they played in all year. So a lot of respect for them and that was a heck of a game. To be fair to you guys, you're the, you're the best three and nine team of all time. If you guys would have played Georgia. Instead of Michigan playing Georgia, you guys would have lost by it's four. It's so funny Taylor, telling that's, the that's, coaches, telling the actual coaches that. But hey. you guys, but like, legit, like, that's did you guys like, have one game you lost by more than seven? It's kind of no. like being the prettiest turd in the toilet. No bowl. question. Yeah, I get it. But if he says, but, okay, yeah, but listen, you're not talking to me anymore. I know, like it's tough. Like you know, you, I'll, I'll you start to realize you're having fun. Yeah, yeah. and then you, you start telling like, oh, these are their actual jobs. Yeah, like you're yeah. trying. But if you okay, okay, backpedaling. Nebraska, three and nine. I know it's tough. We're going to get past this in a second. How do you guys change where Nebraska is back to the 97, the it's being been, mentioned with the top four It's teams? been a, prog a process, you know, mm -hmm. and, and I don't like to talk about what happened here before, but Nebraska was always one of the elite programs in the country. That's not where we found it when we came back, and it's been a, a process to try to build it back, you know, and, and that's culture, that's talent, that's a uh, hundred things, and – uh, we had a good enough team last year to win every game we played. We didn't, and that's on all of us to do a little bit better. But the progress is undeniable, and I think everybody that watched us last year can see how close we are to being a good team. And, and now it's up to us to, to put the little missing pieces and ingredients in to make sure it gets there. Mm -hmm. What have you seen in a spring practice this year compared to last year that's maybe shown that promise that you're looking forward to? There's so much enthusiasm, excitement around this right now. Uh, and a lot of it is because, you know, there's a chip on our shoulders because of how it all went last year. Mm -hmm. um, the, the guys that are back know we were good enough to win those games. And so, and so there's a real motivation there. We've also added some new coaches and new players. You, you know, you guys sat with Casey and um, there's been a just kind of an energizing uh, movement from those guys it's really it's kind of invigorated all of us just to have new faces around here um, and the guys are hungry so the effort is awesome on the field and we still got a long way to go but we're seeing a lot of good things mm -hmm. being uh being Scott Frost in Nebraska Legend. and it's such an easy ask and question to say you know what's it gonna take to get back to the 90s and this this and that do you fucking hate that question by now <laughs> Uh, no, I, I mean, this is a great show to be honest on too. Like we have a little fun. I mean, it, that's my job like is to, to do that, and so that's what I think about all day long anyway. So if somebody asks me, they're just catching me mid thought, you know. Yeah. But you know, this, this place wasn't what it was uh, once Coach Solich left. Frankly, Coach Pelini did an awesome job, and he doesn't get the credit he deserves. But you know, it's been on a downslide for a while. You know, will the every great program in the country has gone through a downturn, and it's just hard to recapture it. If you never lose it, it's a lot easier. It's like getting out of shape when you're old. Like, if you never stop working out, you're fine. But now, Coach Frost got hurt squatting yeah, this I, week. Yeah, I hurt myself squatting. That's a tough deal, so it's the downhill for you. So it's like what you nah, said. I'm fighting back. I'm you're fighting gonna, back? Yeah, I'm fighting back. God. You, you know, but this has been a process, and um, I think about it all the time. It, you know, for us to, to be elite again, NIL's really got to take shape in Nebraska. We got to be able to recruit a little better. You got to catch momentum where you have a good year and then you recruit better and have another good year. Uh, this is as good a college town as there is in the country. We have the best fan base in the country, like he said. We have all the resources. It's just a matter of getting the wind in our sails again. Uh, and it's not going to be a giant leap. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be a steady climb. Coach Chin's like, when he talks about finding the advantages in like recruiting, whether it be NIL, like, because being a player here, um, you know, the, the shtick is always when you're in those recruiting meetings, right? Like if we can get the player here, 
and they see the facilities. You guys are obviously building, what is it, a $200 million facility out there? Yep. Like, what are the areas that you want to really dive into? It seems like it's going to, it's, it's facilities and an IL. Yeah, I think those are two of the, you know, major sticking points, but it's also the people at Nebraska. And like Coach Frost said, the resources from nutrition to strength and conditioning to academic support to life skills, as you know, as a player here, uh, NIL is going to be huge for us. The new facility is going to be huge. And then, you know, it's, as you've seen, as the team's grown, like Coach Frost talked about, it's, you know, really taking care of that 500-mile radius, getting those players here starting with that base and then adding some really good players from across the country. We've always been a national recruiting brand from back when coaches were talking about the 90s to all the way until now. So it's really starting with those local guys. I would consider all that 500-mile area, that local guys, and then getting some pieces from across the country. And we want to target the best ones in the country um, that we can right now, especially with those, those things you mentioned. How long, how long until that new facility is all done? I think next summer. So we'll go through this entire the year and spring ball next year and move in before the uh, 23 season. And you, you guys are sharing those renditions with the new recruits and everything like that? Oh, yeah, they see them. Yeah. Um, and too, very right? soon we'll be able to walk them through it with hard hats on and explain where they're going to be living for the next four years. Yeah, that's outstanding. The, the facilities here are, are pretty unbelievable. I love the weight room, the locker room. It seems like a really close-knit group, like family. The, the equipment guys get along with the guys who are the trainers and – it just seems like everyone's kind of like put together around here. Like everyone cares and is all pushing the cart towards the same direction. That, that's why Will mentioned it. But when we get kids on campus and they come see it, we got a great chance to get them. Yeah. And and part of that is honestly just people's impression versus the reality of what Lincoln, Nebraska is like. We get kids from Florida that that's think true. Yeah. they think they're going to come up and there's a stadium <laughs> in the middle of a cornfield somewhere. That's and then right. they see Lincoln and and those kids sit on my couch and say, "Man, coach, this is awesome. I didn't know it was anything like this." Right. Uh, but we're also far away from a lot of those recruiting pockets. So when we get kids to Lincoln, we got a great shot. Yeah. So how, like, what's the process like trying to get these kids? Like, you have your eye on somebody who's in Florida, Pahokee, Florida. How, like, how do you pitch them nice bowl. to come to Pahokee, Florida's little little spot now? The you muck. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, the, the muck. muck. But yeah, that place is, is wild. But how do you get someone, like, from that area to come here? You know, like, what, how would you sell them on that? Because me, my first thought, just lie to them. Tell them whatever they want to hear, right? <laughs> but, I mean, if I was a coach, I'm lying through my teeth. It, it's funny. When I sit down with kids, one of the first things I tell them is get your BS detector out because you have to be able to tell the difference between the people that are telling you the truth yeah. and just telling you what you want to hear to get you to their school. Right. Because if somebody um, says, hey, you, you'll play for us, and then another coach says, hey, you got to earn your spot to play, like based on that kid's personality, he's going to pick one way or the other. You know what, though? At the end of the day, you want the kid that's going to come – that says you have to earn it. Because if a kid wants to come to your school just because you lie to them and tell them they're going to start early, it's probably not the right kid to have in your program. Yeah, that's true, but there's also those kids that just are. I mean, so you heard Casey talking about he went in that transfer portal after his freshman year because he thought he was going to be the man. Yeah. He no, was no, probably no. told that he was going to start or something like that at Texas. Yeah, probably something like that. You want a bunch of But you also have those kids that, like, uh, I don't want to put a name out there that's, like, guy with all the talent in the world doesn't matter. He's just going to be good no matter what. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, guys with crazy talent and that don't work very hard, but they're still going to be, like, first-round picks. Right. Yeah, you I'm thinking of a couple whatever. guys, but I, you know, I, I, yeah, I won't say their say name. Like, you don't want to soil the guys out there. <laughs> yeah. I'm I, thinking of a couple. I, I think that's when you, why you have to get them here, though. You yeah. Know? We have to do a good job and get them here. And like you said, the, the same thing with people, the same thing with the state of Nebraska, right, where you played, Michigan. There's Michigan, Michigan State, Detroit Lions, right? There's NIL money going three separate entities. There's fans going three separate ways. And right. in this state, it, it bleeds – Husker, that's it. And so you got a lot of a lot of resources, a lot of everything pouring into this program, and it's unbelievable to be yeah. part of it. That's it, definitely a way for you guys to become, like, one of the household names in college football, again, is them at the NIL. Yeah. I mean, you guys have said it a bunch already, but, like. And Casey was, you know, Casey and Garrett were both alluding to it. Yeah, yeah like, you have the best NIL programs. Like, it don't matter what the landscape looks like. If you make it that kind of money like that's gonna yeah that's gonna sell for sure because yeah. i remember being like i was telling you guys before we started the pod like i didn't grow up with a lot of money like the thought of like making six figures in college it's it's mind where would that money have gone when you oh. like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah i would love here to we go yeah, yeah, get to ask the now we're going yeah. oh yeah there have been a lot of party going involved my nose is a bit of a vacuum in college so <laughs> it was uh it probably would have gone a lot of the wrong places to be totally honest with you i would not have been a guy you would have like to have around too much in college. I would have worked hard though. I tell you what, 
I would I would have loved you in practice, I promise. Oh, no question. At Oregon at Oregon, we would have slayed it together. We had an absolute <laughs> we great time. slayed it together. <laughs> Partied hard, come in. Yeah, I stink a little bit like alcohol, but we're going the entire practice. That's don't, right. Don't you worry. That's right. I don't got the salt like that anymore. I can't be drinking all the time. <laughs> how do you guys uh how do you guys manage that? Obviously we're in like what is it like year two, the whole NIL stuff. When you got kids coming in there getting all these NIL deals and everything else, like how do you kind of, I guess, mentor, monitor, you know, keep guys focused, yeah, keep, main, yeah, keep the main thing, the main thing, and kind of, I guess, navigate with them like through this NIL landscape. The great thing, it, the state law in Nebraska is we can't, as employees of the University of Nebraska, we can't have anything to do with NIL. And, and honestly, that's the best thing for us because I don't want two guys complaining to me that he's getting this and I'm not getting this. Yeah, that'd be bad. Um, so it, it, it's run by another company in Lincoln, and that's the way it needs to stay. Uh, you talking about Open Doors? No. They're, they're, well, they, they do a lot for us, and they've been awesome. That's Nebraska guys that, that started that deal. Oh, yeah, obviously. Blake and Audie. Shout out the boys. Absolutely. Let me invest. They're, they're awesome. <laughs> uh, we have another company that helps, uh, helps our players. Really, football players, basketball players, women's basketball, volleyball are all taking advantage of it. We have uh, over 80 kids in – just in football, that have taken advantage of it. Men's basketball, volleyball, uh, there's a lot going on like that. But having it in somewhere else, you know, I don't want to have to deal with that on a day-to-day -day basis. We just want to coach football. Yeah. Right, right. But knowing that that stuff goes on, and I'm not talking about you distributing anything or being involved in it, but knowing, like, kids are going through that shit now. And where it's not like you're not coming to school just to be a student athlete anymore. You have this component of money. And knowing that guys are coming in, whether Business it's, student yeah, whether it's uh, more ego or not, like managing these, uh, these players to stay focused on the task at hand and why they came to school here. Or why they came to school to play football first. There are a thousand more distractions than when I played. Several hundred more even than when you played. With everything going on and social media and all these opportunities for kids. And, and that's why we have to be select and make sure we're getting the right kids that are here for the right reasons. And if they're getting all that on top of it, great. But the first thing needs to stay the first thing. And that's education and uh, making yourself great on and off the field. And so we got to look for those type of guys and guys that aren't just here for the wrong reasons. Yeah. See, I don't know if, I don't know. For me, it's like, if you could sell the idea of the NFL dream to all these kids, that's what they're all trying to do. That's like the best thing, like the whole academic part, you know. Hey. Right, you're a student athlete. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. You're a, you're a student first, student athlete, athlete second. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. I feel like that's right. the move. Right. When you're trying to get guys. But hey, listen, obviously did we have you, different. Did you graduate? <laughs> What's that? Taylor, did you graduate? Unfortunately, I did. Good for you. Nah. Oh, well, you said unfortunately you did. I, yeah, I haven't well, used my degree once on, in eight man. years. What was your degree? Uh, general studies. Yeah. I was a yeah, jack of all trades, master of none, but I've fallen into this business. <laughs> jack of all trades. Nice. Yeah, I think um, I wish I would have took college more seriously when I was at Michigan. Like, I was all football all the time. But at the same time, like, I feel like there should be, with all this new advancement and stuff that's going on, like, people being more progressive with, like, NIL, you can pay guys now there needs to be more of a focus on like financial literacy and teaching these guys like how to run a business and how to like understand what you, what your possibility of making it to the NFL is. Everyone always plays like that. Oh, it's less than 1% of guys that are in college. But like, if you got a chance and that's your dream, like why not help these kids be most prepared for that and then have like some sort of setup where you can always come back and your school's going to be paid for no matter what, but you can focus full time on football and it's like oh, it's a total pipe dream it's totally totally out there but it's a thought yeah i mean it's tough because not a lot of guys like there's not it's so rare for a lot of guys to say like i haven't used my degree in eight years you know what i mean like you're yeah you're like no a, I, i'm super i am super you're lucky. A pro but yeah you're a good fucking player right yeah not everybody gets to like uh have longer careers so i feel like the majority still kind of like would need to use their degree right mm-hmm I, th I think that's one of the great. <laughs> <laughs> of course, well, I mean, what you guys got? What? I, the only ones that graduate from college and aren't using their degree are either stupid or they're inmates or drug addicts. I think, and, unless they're or a Pro Bowl player. Or a Pro Bowl player. <laughs> I said, and then I, I said, definitely won that hey. category, dude. Of, uh, do and not then I say you still got to use your degree, right? Yeah. <laughs> like, no, I think Coach does a great job with it. Though. I've been in some of the, you know, the closing meetings at the end of recruiting visits with him. And I know one thing that's important to him is making sure that these guys have a plan for life after football, whether that happens like you 10 years down the road, 15 years down the road, or after your last snap in Lincoln. And so, you know, Keith, Keith Zimmer, life skills, 
they do a great job starting the financial literacy with these young guys and then also bridging that gap between the end of their education and when they start their uh, civilian life. Mm -hmm. So I think that Nebraska does a really good job with that piece of it. And even uh, like life skills, you mentioned Keith and stuff, but like you, you've coached in the league. Like you have life skills that players want to like uh, look to for either mentorship or anything else because you have an idea what it's like to coach guys in the league. Like how do you use – how do you use that mentality and your experience to develop players or have com or communicate with them or lead them? Well, I think you try to use it from the time they're freshmen till the time they're seniors. You know, when you're in, we're in unit meetings, we show a lot of NFL film, right? Because guys don't want to watch other college guys. They want to watch right, the, pros, the Sunday man. league, right? Absolutely. They want to watch that stuff. And also they want to know, how do I get there? Well, I'm going to tell you how to get there. And it, you might not want to hear the answer. You know, it might be, you got to study film differently or more. You got to, take care of your body. You got to eat better. You have to practice a different way. You might have to play special teams, even though you're a starter, you know, things like that. And so I think having the experience in, in that league, those kids understand that we're not filling them full of a bunch of bullshit. We're telling the truth and, and getting guys like you to come back and, and talk to the guys a little bit and having other resources come in to tell them it's not what you see on television. It's not hard knocks, right? right? Yeah, it is hard knocks, hard knocks, but it, it's, it, it's a different deal. It's a it's a 365 day process, and it's not just about what happens two hours down there. Yeah, with uh with last year and the way uh the progress that the defense made, I know you guys lost some pieces. Like uh, I want to say what I was reading is you speaking on the continuity of the defense and carrying it over to the next year. Like, what are some some jumps you've seen the defense make in spring ball? Uh, I think you know, outside the. Uh, schematics in the, in the film it's the leadership i know you guys talked to garrett nelson a little bit and there's mm -hmm. there's other leaders that are really developing some of those guys that you saw last year that were really good players that may not have been the old guys those guys are developing into some really good leaders which i'm really happy about um and then we've been able to tweak the schemes a little bit you never want to start over you know we want to keep as much same as same as as you can but we've been able to tweak a few things and make some improvements on maybe where we were deficient a little bit last year uh schematically wise and now we just got to plug some plug some new players. Right. As far as Garrett Nelson goes, talking to him, he makes you want to run through a wall. Like he that, does, he, his man. like the kid bleeds Nebraska. Like he loves everything about it. Like, what's his leadership done for you guys going into this next year? Because he's got he was confused at how many years he has left, but I'm assuming it's one <laughs> or two. I mean, I think I think he might be able to have three after COVID, but I'm not oh I'm not God. sure. <laughs> hey, no, we don't know if the kids are some breaking news thing right there. But he see he literally he he bleeds it like he was explaining to me what it's like to ha get a black shirt that process and everything like that. Like, what other other guys like him on that defense that sh that exemplify that type of leadership? Or it's he funny like he didn't know how many years he had left because he's a general studies major. Is he? Yeah, <laughs> there you go. It's, all, gotta it's use all it. starting to add up. Got to worry that thing no problem. Did he just stay still? That's awesome. You know how it is. Now we're, we're seeing we're seeing some definite growth. You know, the two inside backers were really good players for us. Uh, Luke Reimer and Nick Henry. Oh, yeah, he was a little yep. stud. Tackling yep. machine. Yep, and then, um, you know, Ty Robinson, another def defensive lineman from Arizona. He's, Love that. You know, he's he played a lot of good football for us last year as a young guy, and he stepped up his leadership game. And then in the back end, you know, returning Quentin Newsom and Miles Farmer, those guys have got some leadership in that back end too. So all those guys, it's been nice to see them step up and with us plugging new guys in. Yeah. From a from an offensive side of the ball, like Casey watching, what was uh, Hernand? What was Martinez? It? Martinez. Yeah. Martinez last year and Casey this year. What, how, are the, how are the two different? How are they similar? And um, what do you look forward to with Casey? Yeah, we spent four years with Adrian, and I, I love him. Uh, just a great human being. Um, I think he needed a fresh start, and I think we did too, if I'm yeah. being honest. And um, Transfer Portal gives you an opportunity to do that both ways. And, uh, you know, we hunted in the portal hard for the right guy, and uh, Coach Whipple and I both agreed on him. And he's been a great leader since he's been here. And just his competitive spirit, um, him along with some of the other guys that are new, really kind of lifted the, the energy on our team and, and just that that drive and focus on our team so it, it's fun to watch a team that he's leading right now yeah is when you when you say that you guys both kind of wanted a fresh start was that like talked about at all towards the end or was it kind of like he mentioned leaving and you guys were like okay that's a good idea you should go no you know it 
in some ways for me, I spend so much time with these guys. When somebody leaves, it's kind of like breaking up with a girlfriend. Yeah. I mean, you, you've invested so much time and effort into somebody and trying to help them be good, and you hate to see them go. Um, I, he he invested so much and gave so much to this university too, so much time and effort and playing through injury, and I got a ton of respect for him. Um, I think at the end of the day, the decision he made was probably the right one for him, and uh, I think in the end of the day, we'll land in a good place too. Do you hate dealing with that portal stuff? If you got a real answer from every coach, they hate all the changes that are happening. Right, 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 right. Because, right. you know, um, obviously you get Casey and you're, you know, like, oh, we're getting somebody the, over here to portal's replace. the best. Right, portal but works, then, works then for Then the Hawkeyes get somebody ways. and you're like, well, the portal sucks. Right, right, right. People leave, but, like, yeah, what's it like messing with that portal business? It's the game now, so it doesn't matter what I think. That's the game. we got to be the best we can at, at playing that game. Well, and it's a level of free agency, right? Like, it's basically the, the free agency in the NFL, and where's the cap number? Well, how does that stuff work? How does the NIL yeah, stuff I mean, work it, with all that? It's, it's free agency with no cap, so it's, it's yeah. the Wild West right now. You know, and the, the difference is, like, you know, in the, uh, you know, in the NFL, if you guys need, a, you know, a, another uh, tight end, right? You guys may feel like you need somebody else, whether it's for depth or to be a starter. Mm -hmm. You bring somebody else in, everybody else under contract, they ain't going anywhere. Right. In college football, you bring somebody else in, somebody else might feel jaded about it, and they can just leave. Right. So it's a, it's a very, it's a very delicate uh, balancing act, and I that think coach, coach has a lot of uh, stuff on his plate that goes into every decision. It's not as easy as people think. Where just oh, that guy's in the portal, go get him. The, right. has to the, be a perfect the fit. smart programs out there have, have figured it out. They're, they know they need NIL money, and they're taking their D coordinator's salary and cutting it in half, and then giving that. <laughs> that's not, that's not that. Hey, yeah, I did see Chin's got a raise. We might need to, you know, yeah, you might have a snip part of that. Start paying some guys. Yeah, get some guys here. What do you think? Are you willing to do that for Nebraska? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, are we live right now? <laughs> oh, we Absolutely. put him on the spot last year. I would Nebraska. ask him. You, like, you'd probably coach for free just to get a national championship. Wouldn't ain't you? no doubt. There's no doubt <laughs> ain't about no it. No doubt. Did right. you cut your dick off for a national title? <laughs> nah, I don't know if I'd go that far. That's <laughs> really? probably that's probably going a little far. That's true. I need him to work harder than that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I was gonna say like last year we were in AZ and um, we were I was busting Taylor's balls. I was like, hey, would you take a million dollar pay cut if if the Titans would bring me back on the team? Like you'd give me the money, and he's like, fuck no. <laughs> like God fine. damn, bro. I earned that. Yeah, for sure. But Jesus, you trying to win? Well. Did y'all win? Did y'all win? Don't make me do Did this. Did y'all win? I tore my ACL. No, no, no. This past year. Oh, no, we didn't win. Exactly. That's a tough deal. Well, you think we would have beat the Bengals if you... 100%. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> 100%. You're probably right. Yeah, You know what? You're probably right. <laughs> All right, Will, I got a question for you. Yeah, you, yeah, you okay. guys ask questions, man. You talked about <laughs> Nelly Garrett. Talked about his black shirt, right? Yeah. I ask all the guys that come back... Usually it's in front of the guys, but this will be on video forever. Oh, wow. I'm excited. What? Because I'm just going to tell you right now, the black shirt is hands down my favorite probably thing about college football of all time. I've been a part of a lot of great teams and a lot of locker rooms and all that kind of thing, but just consistent thing. What does being a black shirt mean to you? Oh, that's a good question. Um, you know, a cliche answer is like everything, right? Like when you're when I was a player here, and you earned your black shirt, you know, like, cause you see the kids, you see the energy in the guys when they get a black shirt or when you see somebody like Garrett sitting here and he's talking about how he was emotional, his mom was emotional when she called him. And it kind of takes you back to where all the stuff you wrote down and charted out, whether it be at a 6 a.m. show up time for speed, 6.45, you're going in and lifting at 7.30. But all like the sacrifice that you poured, that you think in your mind at times it's, you're kind of being selfish because you want to go to the next level, but you start to understand when you're being a leader in front of the guys, you're teaching guys defense because coaches can't be in the offices with you. And you're running all these little unit meetings with each other, with the, with your teammates. And you pour all of that sacrifice like into other guys and you feel it around you too. And those, those same guys, the black shirts, the starting defense that's with you, you know, they're giving the same effort and the same energy every day, even on days that you might not want to. And it's like the whole quote, like discipline, choosing what you want most over what you want now. Like taking like that selflessness from yourself and pouring it again into your daily disciplines and routine and giving it to your teammates and knowing it comes back to you in, in a form of a black shirt, right? Like you walk out here and you're holding a black shirt and you know how coveted it is. 
and everyone thinks it's so great and glamorous and and it is it really is like you're stoked because you got this prestigious type award but i think like garrett embodies it. the emotion of garrett i thought embodies it because it reminds you of how much you put into something so to me i feel like that's what that's what like b being a black shirt meant to me is like you wore it, you looked around yeah you feel awesome walking around in it but you're just like yo you fucking put everything on the line with your teammates in the offseason, like you know, you guys are on your golf courses and shit. <laughs> we're with our, we're with our strength coach. But again, like those dog days, man, those Fridays, the GPP, the conditioning, just all of it, and it paying off in a form of like, yo, I fucking earned this. Well, you, you said, I mean, you said it too. Everybody thinks being a black shirt so cool, which it is. You're, you're a black shirt forever. But being a culture keeper is dirty, nasty work now. Right. That's dirty work. Right, and like you learn as you got older, like. Coach, uh, Coach Pellini, but uh, Coach JP, John Papuchis was somebody, he was our coordinator at the time. And, you know, he would talk to me at times when I'm, you're trying to figure out more that you can do in the leadership role. And like you said, the culture keeping, the policing, the players and stuff like that, you, you start to learn that not everything is just barking and being vocal on the field. Like you start to learn how to talk to your teammates because again, it's such a, I was talking about it earlier with Garrett, it's such a melting pot in a locker room like Nebraska and everywhere all over the country. But you got to figure out how to communicate with your teammates because everybody doesn't see things the same way. Like I'm trying to, you're trying to be a guy that carries out a message that you guys have, but at the same time, you might hear some disgruntled bullshit that might be true in that dude's story, right? And you're trying to find the balance between how do I get to this guy, not look like some kiss ass of the coaches, but at the same time, you're trying to carry out it like a standard, right? Um, that's kind of one of the hardest things to do, that last part, though. Right. Is to, like, be a leader and also not seem like you're with the coaches. Because a lot of times in programs, you can be, like, with the boys or with the coaches. Like, there's Correct. no in-between. It's like, how do you find that balance? And that's consistent leadership, but not just one guy, but multiple, multiple guys doing that. If it's just one guy, it's easier for the small group of those losers to be like, oh, that guy's a kiss ass. Yeah. He's doing X, Y, and Z. Absolutely, but dude. But, like, if you can get leadership where you have, like, five, six, seven, eight guys preaching the same thing, doing the same thing, it makes it easier for this to be, like, more of, like, a molded unit between coaches and players. Right. Now, that a lot of time, for me, especially, like, having coaches on, like, an authoritative level, like, I never did well with authority. So I had an issue having to, like, work through that process. And I think the black shirt thing the way you guys, the way it's talked about. Like, right, I've been here for four hours and seeing the way it's talked about, that's a really cool way to see how guys are truly invested in the process. Yeah. It's just a defensive thing, correct? Yep. Yeah. Just a defensive thing. What do we do on offense? No, yeah, just try to score points and get them back on the right. score. No, <laughs> but yeah. it's like uh, you feel responsibility too. It's like, uh, you know, again, it just it goes into that sacrifice. Like you, you stand up in front of the team and guys talk about the black shirt way and this and that. You build a standard on day one, right? Well, day, you guys know how it is. Day twenty in training camp isn't the same as day one, no. and everyone's feeling a little more sorry for themselves. Everybody's a little more banged up. You the lows start to show up. The lows start to show up a little bit more on film where you chart them. Maybe the grading gets a little bit easier because you start understanding it's the dog days. But it's like that standard you kind of uphold and build on day one. And you need those guys or the black shirt way to carry out, hey, this is how we do it and this is how we, we're going to do it year in and year out all the way around. Um, sorry, I got a little fired up there. Oh, that's great. That's great. How many guys are black shirts right now? Zero. Oh, none of them. So how do you, so once, if so, Garrett earned his his freshman year. Yep. Garrett earned one every year. So he has, to, he has to continually earn it every single year? Yep. They give is that like you just keep it and then you can get taken away at any time? When you, when you walk out, when you walk out the door, you keep it. Yeah. Damn. But then that's we'll, a wild deal. So when do you make decisions on guys keep having black shirts? Oh, what was it? About a week before the first game? A week before the first game. We've been actually since he, it was his idea, but we started bringing some of the ex-black shirts back to award the black shirts to the guys on the team now. Oh, that goes hard. Well, and, that does go hard. I yeah. So when you're, when well, you got to come back and do that. Yeah. You, oh, I'd love um, to. Dude. Come hand one out cool? to one of the to one of the linebackers, um, and then there's some guys that earn it over the course of the year. And it's not all just starters. It's not all uh, best players. It's it's guys that do things the right way. Are there situations where your best players aren't black shirts? Yeah, we've had those situations. It, you talk to the old guys about before guys getting their black shirt taken away from them because they weren't doing things right off the field or weren't weren't being good leaders, and it matters to the guys. Yeah, partying, booze, and that type of thing. What's it like for you guys to see? 
<laughs> What's it, right? That's what it, yeah, it's yeah, not yeah. that great. Yeah. What's it like for you guys to see, um, I guess, the black shirt standard be carried out when it, it does come to fruition, right? Like maybe there's some times where you're like, you know, we're doing this tradition, but you might not feel it maybe in your first year. But maybe you did. Like there's there's things that people don't see, but when it does come together, what is it like for you to see that stuff be upheld? Yeah, you know, I think uh, it's it's always been, like Coach Frost said, it's been a process. But, uh, you know, the first couple years, you know, I think it was hard because they didn't know – necessarily his way or our way or what they exactly needed to do now like last year that group like that was like a real black shirt group like and, and not just because of the way they play in the field but the way they practiced the way they worked the way they carried themselves we talk about all the time black shirt you got to elevate yourself and everybody around you right and so those guys i think they embodied that and that was really cool to watch and you know it was really cool last year we had a couple guys we didn't we didn't go into this game one with 11 no. And so to see those other guys that were starters, you don't get to be a, a black shirt by default. And to see those guys that earned it the next couple weeks in or six weeks in or whatever, that was really cool too because not only did they get better, but they saw how everybody else was working around them and they understood that my stuff's got to get up. It means something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How was it for you um, keeping the morale high and keeping the defense playing at a high level with all obviously we alluded to it earlier but you know you have a point differential of zero but when you're losing those tight games how are you keeping the morale up versus because we were even texting one time talking about you know from a player perspective you might feel shitty right a coach comes in we got to win we got to figure out how to win this game and you get that much harder critiquing the smaller things because you just you feel like as a defense you didn't get it done versus highlighting the good shit hey guys we're this fucking close and showing them positive stuff. Like, what are you doing to keep the morale high to where they played at a high level? Yeah, I think you always got to show the elite stuff and then the stuff we need to improve on. But to the kids' credit, I thought there was going to be a couple games where I was going to go stand in front of them on Sunday or Monday and I was going to be like, oh, man, we're going to have to pull some teeth to get practice going right now. To those kids' credit, they were ready to roll. They never pointed a finger at anybody on the defense, offense, special teams. They just pointed the thumb back at themselves, and they said, what can we do, Coach? How can we get better? And it was really, really cool, and I think that was because of the leadership we had in that room. Yeah, that's outstanding. Shall we hit? Shall we? Oh, the – is it time? Duke Cannon. Duke Cannon. Duke Cannon. Where is the Duke Final – we say final question. We end up asking more and just bantering even longer. But at some point, we do a uh, – we do a Duke Cannon. These questions are brought to you by Duke Cannon. The best – this is no clown shit. We're talking big-ass brick of soap. It's huge. <laughs> We're talking thick, high, vis uh, I had it earlier, viscosity, the high viscosity body wash. Learn We're to talking read, Will. dry ice that Taylor likes to put on his feet. Yeah, it's a I cooling antiperspirant. I have an OnlyFans account that I like to put this on. <laughs> it gives it a shimmer. And those guys that pay top dollar to see these toes. I mean, I mean have, sure you, have you used this one right here? Yeah. Oh, bro, this does is. It, does this smell like bush beer? Bro, you, you talking can open bush it up, bourbon? It's yours. Yeah, like, this is this is gonna be your guys'. Okay. This is what it comes in. That's awesome. This military looking like it's for it's for the masculine like an energy. Ammo, ammo That's an ammo can. The yeah, best yeah. smell. Yeah. They, there we go. Well, Not for clowns. Yeah, had a tough time. <laughs> but yeah, had a tough time. You guys are gonna get these, but it's all presented by Duke Cannon. Duke Cannon. Phenomenal, by the way. It really is clean ingredients too. Not the. It rhymes with. Uh, Oshmice. <laughs> Not like the bullshit ingredients out there. Um, you don't get that. Yeah, you, th there's lymph nodes in there, right? Soak stuff in aluminum, that type of stuff. End up with a deep C word, and you don't want the C word. Yeah. So this stuff helps keep you clean, smelling fresh, looking fresh, and being fresh your entire life. And that was Dukes. great, dude. That was a great job. Thanks, man. Hey, have I been doing a better job of pulling my uh, mic? You've been doing a great job. Hey, Thanks, uh, JP. I appreciate that. Hey, so, hey, by the way, this is a really cool to like talk to you guys, and because for me, like going through college and stuff like that and like being around coaches and then having the chance to talk to you guys like we're talking to you right now. Don't know why. Just super rad to me. Really yeah. enjoy it. So I appreciate it. And that's it. How does that make you guys feel? Yeah. Does that, how do you guys like talking with us and being on, being, I was being, being on busting with the boys? I was being open about my emotions. I was hoping. First you of all, you guys yeah. got the best job in the country. I mean, why this, this, is, this is what you do. I mean, business this is booming. This is fun. Uh, you know, I think the world of you because it's not just because how well you played here, but your attitude 
and and everything that you brought to Nebraska. And I think that's why you know, people everywhere love you. But Nebraska fans, there's a special place for you. It's and I, I told Taylor I've been watching you since Marcus Mariota was my quarterback at Oregon and went and played behind him. And I've been a fan of his uh, watching every Titans game through that time. So. You see him get in the face of uh, Richard Sherman that I one time him when he getting, hit him on If the I was his coach, I'd get mad at some of the penalties sometimes. Yeah, but, no but you also want guys to play that way. So that nasty. Like it. It's a double-edged sword. It's it a is. place to do in business it sometimes. Is. But I appreciate that. You got no, it. dude. I, I do. I didn't want to interrupt you. Oh, no, you yeah, I'm, if you want to say nice things. Yeah, trust me. If you want to say I'm nice, you, we're not going to interrupt. Was, I'm fired up to be on here, man. I mean, last time I was a little bit jealous, I got to tell you. I mean... I thought we were boys. We're t- hey, I mean, you know that was a buttoned up the old, situation the old there. Guilt trip, I like it. Right. Give it to him, dude. Give it I to mean, him. You know, I mean, it, it's cool. It's cool. You had the big wigs on. You know, you had the AD, the head coach. It's fine. I we're thought just we were, trying to get clicks, yeah. dude. That's really all we yeah. really care about. Well, like, clickies. Clickbait. Yeah, a hundred percent. Scott Frost is clickbait. There's no doubt. No yeah, question. And Scott, you know, last time he's like, I'm surprised I got to come back on. A, uh, do you have some, Garrett? Oh, I. I'll, oh yeah, yeah. We'll get to. I just. That's why I said final segment versus question. Yeah. No, 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 no. Yeah, I wasn't. I'll, I'll ask the question. I think it'll get some clickbait. But, um, Scott. Uh, no, you're asking, like, you were like, I'm surprised you want me to come on a second time. It's like, the first time, dude, you're playing a game the next day. And me personally, I'm like, you don't want to, you're not trying to fucking catch nobody or nothing. And here at Spring Ball, like, you can let your hair down a little right. bit. And chins, you know, obviously I would have loved to have had Rub it on your feet. Yeah, put some Duke's cannon on, rub it on your feet. But yeah. you can't pass up Trevor Alberts. Get that thick man. body wash, oh, you dude. can't. You can't. And I had it for like 20 minutes. Hey. It was tough. I was in there. I'm fired up. A lot of my friends and family watch you guys listen, podcast. They're so fired. I'm getting texts. They're like, you going to be on the bus? You going to be on the bus? I'm fired up, You man. just put fuck yeah. Yeah. Everybody, everybody, okay, thinks, everybody thinks I'm like, uh, like, like a big deal You're right one of now. the boys. Yeah. Oh, You're one no of the question. fucking boys. You're in a very prestigious group. This is like the black shirt of life. <laughs> you know hey, I like that, dude. You like come on this bus, like you officially got something you take with you for where, wherever you go for the rest of your life. Yeah. That's a big fucking deal. We should get people black shirts. We should yeah. get people black I'm shirts, dude. Really we fucking just with that on idea. It, and you can only get it if you've been a guest. Damn, you me? that was so sick. <laughs> Hey, your question though. You said you had a you thought yeah, you had a good so one. Yeah, so obviously the record last year isn't what you guys wanted. And Scott, this is particularly for you. Uh, you guys made some changes at uh, the special teams category. If your special teams was better, how many <laughs> games do you guys think you would have probably won? At least two more. And at least because two more? Because oh, it, come on, dude. We're going to a bowl game. In, you know, in, the, in two, in two the there board. was one special teams play that if it changed, the game probably would have changed. And it hinged on that. And I'm not talking about games where we gave up a kick return and we missed a bunch of PATs and field goals. So, uh, Well, you if know, you have a kick return in one game and you're not going to mention that, that's almost not fair because you guys never lost a game more than seven points. Well, we, we, got, we got a punt blocked in one game that totally changed the game. We were in control of the game until that happened. And another one where I think his defense gave up 15 yards in the entire second half. Oh, but Michigan State, holy and we, shit. Dude. And we punted it. Fuck to the Michigan wrong sideline and gave up a kick, a punt return, and lost in overtime, and uh, that's been an issue and a thorn in our side for a while. And right. and uh, Bill Bush is our special teams coordinator now and doing a great job. And and the players know how important it is. And so, all, all the effort we're putting in right now in spring ball, uh, special teams is probably getting the most attention and effort. And we all know that needs to get better. It could be the difference. Yeah. The Big Ten's so good. A- every team is. You know, there's this much difference between all these teams, and special teams can make the difference in those types of games. I love your intensity. Um, of all the coaches in the Big Ten, who would you lose a fight to? Lose a fight to? Lose. Who, who do you think you would lose a fight to? If all, all the coaches in the Big Ten got together in a ring and it was kind of a free-for-all, who, who do you think you'd have the like hardest battle time royal with? type situation? Yeah, like a, yeah, I guess and Get so. that mic close, too, don't they? <laughs> Well, I would hope that every coach in the league would say they wouldn't lose because Guys, I, I don't hear feel the like I But we can have you the object. The object. Who's the head coach for Michigan State? Mel Tucker. Yeah, he'd get his ass beat. Probably I don't even know what he looks like. <laughs> He's younger. He could. He, he might be yeah, able to chop it up. Thicker dude. Just you, you know, not just ball? not just because you're from Michigan, but I'm just telling you, Jim was a professional athlete. Yeah. And he's a little bit crazy. I love him. He's a little yeah, he's bit. A cra- he's a little bit crazy. He's the. He just strikes. He's the type of guy that wouldn't give up no matter what in a yeah. fight. It's so, Michigan it, way. But. I, I mean, he'd probably enjoy that, and I would too, in, in a friendly com- competitive Yeah, but you're a lot way. bigger than Jim, don't Brought you think? Brought to you by Bussin' with the Boys. Yeah. You're a lot of main I'm, event. No, he's big now. He, he's my size. 
Oh, really? Yeah, I'm younger than he is, but. Oh, so you Ooh, think okay. you think but, them hands would toss, huh? But I, but he, he, <laughs> he's a tough. He's a tough dude now. He, I That'd got a lot it. of respect for him. Who'd you have the easiest time with in the Big Ten? You think? Is Ch is Chen's a head coach? Who? Oh, you're not okay. Chen, you gonna let him talk like that? Nah, he, he don't hey, want. You he don't want the right smoke, here. Willie. He don't want that smoke. Right here, though. Yeah, who? Who? That's a good one. Who'd be the easiest? Uh, Bob Devaney would be pretty easy. Who's that? Illinois. No, he used to coach no, here. He used to coach here. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> I just assumed whoever the coach for Illinois was. <laughs> he said, oh, who's that, Illinois? <laughs> no, no, Illinois or Purdue, oh. dude. Um, oh, fuck, I had something else on. Oh, we're going to Michigan next week. Maybe. We got, I get some, I, people got to call me back. It's getting, a little, it's getting a little dicey. But what do you guys think about this? Every year, Nebraska and Michigan play in the fall, and they're fighting for the bus trophy. And you guys... Hoist whoever wins. It's the battle of the bus, and it's a giant gold bus with long horns. I'll, I'll on top make of this it. promise to you: if if you make the trophy and you get Harbaugh and their AD to sign off on it, then I'm all in. Let's, Let's go. go, dude. That's what <laughs> That's Nebraska the does. Shit ever. That's what Nebraska does. <laughs> Hey, if you guys legit fought for a trophy, imagine getting hyped up over a bus and trophy. Hoisting a bus and trophy. Hoisting it, giving the bird to the other team, <laughs> while whoever wins. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hey, oh, that's hey, awesome. That made my day. We got trophies in this league with pigs and buckets and everything else. We might yeah. as well have a bus. Yeah, no with question. the bus of giant. Yeah, I love that. Love that idea. Hey, what a win, right? Yeah, I. Uh, my last question. I because asked like four. That's my you bad. Did. This you is did. your That's thing. That's okay. No, I loved your questions. I thought Thank you did you. a great job. I feel like there's a couple more we can get out of Scott, though, because I feel like that dude loves to throw hands. You look at him. Yeah. Motherfucker looks rugged. Yeah. Look at the way he's laying. <laughs> You're sitting. <laughs> he's comfy as he's hell right here. He's built like a Chevy, too. Dude, he's built like a Chevy. <laughs> that, but, man is, uh, that man is diesel. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um, everyone talks about it. Like, it's no secret that everyone feels like Scott Frost is on the hot seat in his last year. You know, I had this written down that one of the – one of the definitions of insanity, you know, doing the same thing over and over and expecting different results. You've been so close, bro. You guys have been so close with this program, with this last year. The zero point difference, you know, I'm, I've been out spouting off about the best three and nine win of all, best three win team of all time. But being so close, and as you guys know, once you get removed from the season, you, you ultimately just become what your record was. And being 15 and 29, like going into 2022, what were a couple of things that, you guys get in the room about it. you made coaching changes. You have a contract restructure. You're doing all these different things. What are a couple of things that you're in that room and you're like, yo, we got to tighten this shit up. Not because you actually feel the pressure or you're on the hot seat, but you're just like, I'm, t I'm sick and tired of being just this fucking close. Yeah. First of all, every coach is on the hot seat every year, uh, essentially. Um, it, it is what it is. I, I tell you, if we don't get it done here, it's not going to be from lack of effort or knowing how to coach or doing things the right way. And we had a big hill to climb to catch. There's a lot of good teams this league and to catch a lot of these, these teams in our league. Um, but I agree with you. That's some of the reason I made changes, not because we weren't doing things the right way. Just, you know, we needed to have a little bit different approach with some new energy, some new ideas, and some new enthusiasm. And I think we got that with some of the new players and coaches that we brought in. Um, our entire team is excited because they know how close they are. And like I said, I think, I think there's a hunger there because, because of the way we lost games and how close we were. And, and also, strangely, through losing a lot of confidence in our team. Because uh, we played, you know, again, a playoff team and, and had them on the ropes and um, had a chance to go ahead of Ohio State in the fourth quarter. And, and I can go through the games. But there, there's a lot of confidence, frustration, but also confidence within our team. And we're going to keep doing things the right way and keep trying to add to the roster and the talent. and keep getting the culture better, and, and then all you can do is go out on Saturday and give it everything you got. I love it, man. Yeah, and another thing, too, is like, Har like last year, Harbaugh was on the proverbial hot seat, and we weren't even ranked top 25 and went to the went to the playoffs. Like, it happens every year. The big, yeah, the winning big solves everything, right? And the thing people need to be more understanding of is when a coach comes in, like, it's not the players he recruited. And so now you're going into the fifth year, right? This yeah. is like... These are your players. These are your guys. These are the guys you guys came in and have had the whole entire time to, to develop. And so, you know I'm how excited. it is, though. People just don't Yeah, you, you see coaches that get jobs where they're already on top of the mountain and they take over for somebody else that got it there. That's a lot easier, particularly coaches that inherit a team where they've been coaching, a coordinator gets promoted or whatever. Right, right. Usually the jobs you get as a head coach are the ones that, that aren't, 
doing real well. Yeah. And, and it's a fix. And this has been a fix. And uh, the great thing is, I think the hard work is behind us. And, and now it's just more fine tuning to make sure that, that some of these close results change. Yeah. We have the outstanding fans that are behind you. And I, we walk down this place, every, every single person, huge Nebraska fans that sold out since 62. I'm excited to see you guys ball out this year, except for one game. Yeah, I'm rooting for you guys, man. Thanks. Obviously, you went Thanks here. for your guy. What? What? Yeah, no, thank you for your guys' time. Like, this has been a blast, and I'm fucking pulling for you. You know I'm ready to just pop off at the mouth anytime on that bus. No question. Rooting and, for and you the guys. crazy thing is, you should have had me ask that last question. Like, you're Why supposed, is that? Because you're, you went to Nebraska. Well, I got no ties. I can make them upset. True. Yeah, well, I mean, but still, you see, like, uh, you see a couple Husker guys talking shop yeah like oh they're giving us the real shit i mean you made my you made my man lena uh, sit up i loved it i'm like you know okay we're fucking we're doing this yeah love the energy dude fuck yeah no but thank you guys man you guys got anything else for us no good luck to you thank you thank you appreciate you guys appreciate having us on it's been yeah. awesome yeah dude the battle for the bus is on its way love it you heard it here first subscribe rate five stars all that fun stuff